Owning a restaurant was these people's dream. We always said, we'll start a restaurant. Some invested everything. We put 50,000 into the business. Busting their guts to make it work. The priority is to pay my staff. I do have sleepless nights. But it's a ruthless business. Four minute steaks for table five. It's an element of survival. We've just been living off credit cards. I can't pay my bills. I'm so completely consumed. I've seen him in tears. I've seen him not be able to eat. It's business or marriage. And with so many big brands crowding the high street, the pressure is greater than ever. I don't know how we're going to cope. I'm Alex Polizzi. Hello, hello. Having set up and managed successful restaurants around the world... Let's get on with it, then. Yeah. I want to try and help struggling owners sort out theirs. You want to entice people in. It's too big because that slows down service, doesn't it? It does. It'd be practical to have it here and it will separate off the room a bit. You obviously struggle with customers at lunchtime, can't yeah. you? We're going to have to unpick this. It won't be easy. No, mate, no. I think it's the nerves that are getting the better of me. But if I can bring some inspiration... Why don't you do an offer and say, subscribe to the Supper Club? And they, some hard work and determination... Chicken tikka, 140. Excited to get it to work for us. There you go. It feels a lot more curated as a menu. It's awesome. amazing. Can I turn things around and leave them a lasting legacy? Look at this. Are you happy? Absolutely. This is what a restaurant should be like. I love it. I'm seeing what we could do and be more positive about it. Check. The restaurant feels it's got a brighter future. I love it when a plan comes together. <laughs>
she passed away. And I just realized that um, she was a great cook and everyone was always of the thought that she should do it herself. And then she wasn't here and it was a case of what, what is there to lose. When Pratik was little boy, he is a special boy because after 10 years of our marriage, he born. My wife insists good food every day. Saturday afternoons used to revolve around dad coming home from work at uh, one o'clock. Uh, we would sit down on the table to have uh, lunch, freshly cooked chapatis. He's always anxious to know something what we're making today. He's always helpful to mom. I've not looked any of these photos oh. since she passed away. <laughs> <laughs> Darling, I'm sorry. I didn't actually, I really didn't realise that. I'm so sorry. I didn't. I mean, look at this beaming boy. Your mum. Well, so that should be up somewhere. Pride of place, darling. She's the inspiration. Mum passed away and I didn't really mourn because I couldn't. I think it's wonderful that she inspired you with such a, a passion for doing something so brave. Yeah. So we've got to honour her memory by making sure this thing bloody works. Yeah. Yeah? That's it, that's it, yeah. It's never a good idea to make big life decisions when you've gone through some trauma. Because, you know, emotions obviously to the fore and probably adrenaline kind of saw him through. But in the cold light of day, this is a bloody hard business and it's a long hard slog it's been a tough time for Pratik and his family I need to find ways to turn around Lilu's fortunes so he can feel more positive about his future I don't know why it looks quite corporate yeah it doesn't look like an independent did you inherit the Indian fine dining tag as well tag, yeah you did, uh huh. Ah, yeah. oh, oh, now so all the little tiny pennies are starting to go. fall into place. Something that is a real bugbear of mine. Yep. Why are these like this? Um. You know, people walk past. They see a Chinese vase and they see a mini teletape to a window. Yeah. And somehow this does not automatically gives them the thought like maybe we should just keep walking, walking on, on by. For those customers who do go inside, they're greeted by more mixed messages and no clear identity. Here we have beach huts. Yeah. Here we have Chinese pottery. Yeah. What on earth are you doing with Padstow, Lake District? You have got to sell your story. The whole point about independent businesses is there's always a really interesting yeah. kernel yeah. of truth yeah. at the heart of it. Promoting a clear identity to reflect Pratik's story will be an issue we'll need to nail. But the food is the heart of the place. And to get a valued opinion of Pratik's set menus, I have a big admission to make. Last night, I sent in acclaimed critic and restaurateur Oliver Payton to get the lowdown on Lilu. I haven't been completely straight with you because I did send in my partner in crime, who is my brother-in-law, Oliver. I got him to come in and scope out the place for me first. He knows a lot about food. And I think the first thing I'll do is give you a few edited highlights of yeah. what he thought. OK. Ah, hello. Hello. How are we? Good, thank you. Um, hopefully you've got a booking for four. Sail. Sail, yeah, yep. there we go. Lovely. Can I just ask you, what is the uh, fish of the day and the game? Uh, fish of the day is sea bass, and game I will have to check. I could have done without him telling me that the chef only turned up at 10 to 6. I'm on an evening out, I don't need to know that. This idea of a fixed price menu, 25, 9 pounds for two courses, I'm just not interested in that. Well, it's taken us 35 minutes to get our start to this, so we can talk about how long it's taken. 
Okay, Alex, I'm out. Wow, that was an experience. For 29 pounds, this lamb chops in the starter, soft shell crab. But you know, the food is not bad. It's good, it's not great, but there's signs of life. Well, how, what do you think? Do you think that's fair, unfair? The 35 minute for the starter was a little bit longer than we would, we would have liked. To. The reason we've got a two course or a three course menu is it works in some ways uh, because most people that come in uh, uh, will have a, a two course meal. I'd like to know that you have actually costed out these dishes properly. Uh, I've not. It's essential in this business to sell dishes that deliver the right profit. This will be a fundamental lesson for Lilu. The truth is, you've put your money where your mouth is. Yeah. You've put your money into this restaurant, yeah. and I salute you for the bravery. Yeah. I just now have to sweep up the remnants of yeah. any um, naivety and any of the sillier decisions that you've made. That's it. And we need to make this work. Two years ago, Pratik opened Lilu, a fine dining Indian restaurant in Leicester. But his new concept isn't pulling in the crowds. When it's quiet, it does feel like it's a bit of a, a drain when you're not actually being able to spend time with your family, but then at the same time, you're not making a living. Today, we start the challenge of getting the restaurant on the road to recovery. First up, food profitability. I've brought along restaurateur and critic Oliver Payton to help. His years of experience will be crucial. I always yeah. say to him, say, oh, what's it like in the, being in the restaurant business? I say, it's like having a baby that never grows up, that's always in nappies. That's what it's like. It always needs attention, mm -hmm. you know, and that's the culture we need to get into you. Yeah. Again and again, we're seeing that, you know, people are opening restaurants without the skill sets. We're going to try and give them to you, but now you have to prove that you can do it. Yep. We want to show Pratik he needs to make the ideal 70% profit on every dish he sells, which might mean a rethink for the soft-shell crab for starters. This dish costs 3 55 to put on a plate. To sell it for 70%, yep. you'd have to be selling it for £14.20. OK. This crab is a pricey start to a meal. I mean, I mean, the scary thing for me was the lamb. You know, this dish cost nine pounds thirty something to put up. You should be selling this dish at around thirty-four, thirty-five pounds, something in that variety, yeah. to be getting your margin. You know, so that this dish alone should be sold at more than you're charging for your whole menu. The two dishes you're looking at here is a reason that you might go out of business, because that is this, that's your livelihood, that's your future. Yeah. So it's it's getting on top of that. At the end of the day, it's about turning this business into a business. Over here, we've got some solutions. Selling food for more than it costs to make is the golden rule of profit. First up, a chicken tikka starter. The cost price for this whole dish is £1.11. Mm. Yep. So, darling, if you're selling it at £7, you are making 81% profit every time you sell that dish. And for a butter chicken main course, and this dish, which is costing you just above two pounds, and you'll be selling at 12 pounds. Also making Pratik around an 80% margin. You have to be a walking computer all of the time while you're greeting the guests. You know, there's so much going on in your head, which needs to become second nature to you, which is not at the moment. No. Now, with hopefully a better understanding of pricing dishes for profit, it's time to put the first stage of our plan into action, starting tonight with the evening service. So what we're going to do is we're going to try and put the set menu mm -hmm. against an a la carte menu. We want to show Pratik his set menu strategy has to change by taking his starter and main course dishes that make money and arranging them as an a la carte. He was feeling consoled because he was getting 29 quid out of someone rather than the 18 or 19 quid that he'll be getting if they order off the a la carte. But the point is that he's making no money off that £29 menu. What's the point? Sell a many for less and make more money. I mean, that's got to make sense. We hope our test will show the direction Lilu should head in. Pratik's £29 set menu or are more profitable a la carte. 
we've got a a la carte menu, which is uh, individually chosen dishes. And then we've got a two course menu. Tonight is about understanding what customers want to pay, but also we hope to see how Pratik leads and communicates with his team. Well, what do you think of this new menu? Uh, we, we, what do you think of the new menu? Uh, to be honest, this menu, yeah. I haven't seen yet. You haven't seen the menu you're about to cook? Have you explained that to the kitchen? Um, you don't need to explain it. I don't know <laughs> if it... Yeah, I can go and explain it to the kitchen. Or does but it not matter? No, it won't, it won't really matter. Okay. Because all the, all these are these are just normal menu items. Okay, that we've got fine. On there, so. Okay. I'm not putting my whites on, all right? No, we'll I'm need not. to be harsh on Pratik if we're to spot other areas that need looking at and ultimately test whether he actually has it in him to run a restaurant. Can we get a table two, please? Yeah, sure. Uh, let me just take you through to the table. Got a couple of menus available today. So we've got our £29 two course menu just there. And then we've got our a la carte menu, which is just there for you. Do you think poppadoms? Yes, your poppadoms and dips are complimentary from us. Straight away, he appears to have forgotten all about making a profit on food. So I'll need to be cruel to be kind. You realise you've sent my costings out the f***ing window. Right. Because you didn't mention all the stuff that comes first. I haven't costed that in, have I? It's a costly mistake, but a simple fix. Free food will have to stop. Hi. Straight from her day job, Pratik's wife, Bavini, arrives for the evening shift. Oh, yeah. So you've come after a day's work? Oh, yes, yes. To I help do. out here? Yeah, well, I come when it gets quite busy. Usually Thursday, Friday, Saturday, I'm here, but normally 9 to 6, I'm at work, so yeah. Long days. With service underway, it's becoming clear the a la carte is the way to go. So no, no prefix menus at all yet? No, not yet. OK. The whole point about the set price menu is that it's supposed to be cheap, it's supposed to be quick, it's supposed to be easy to deliver. I mean, I'm glad that the a la carte's doing so well, but it's not, I'm not, it's not a surprise. You know, people do not want to spend £29 on a set menu. But the new menu in a busy restaurant have exposed a problem. Pratik is struggling to cope with the pressure of running a busy service. Can I ask a quick question? Are you going to run out of anything? Yes, I've already said to Alex that we'll run out of the stuffed baby peppers. So are you telling people when they sit down? Uh, no is the answer to that, right? No, I've not told the last table. When people sit down, you have to tell them if something's off the menu. Something's off the menu, yeah. Because otherwise... They, they'll order that, yeah, obviously, yeah. Why don't you go and tell them? Um, I... Should they... I go and tell them? No, as in... Um... Should Alex go and tell them? Should we all go and tell them? Clear communication is crucial to running an efficient service. And beginning to feel the heat, Pratik pulls me aside. When you're going to be bringing loads of people in, yeah. if you could just prepare me so I can prepare the kitchen, so then we can prepare food, because we... It's not loads of people, darling. There's 18 people in here. As the evening gets into full swing, orders are beginning to slip. All right, table seven has it gone. Table 7 just came up now. Two tables have been seated for more than an hour because if the order came in at 6.35, they're still on starters. The main course is happening called away and an hour has gone by. That is too slow. And on top of a slow service, a lack of communication is causing further confusion. That's not the menu, but it's the fact that... No, like, we we didn't... Didn't... What's wrong? What's wrong? Tell me what's wrong. No, no, it was the fact that we didn't know how, how many people were going to turn up today. Well, you didn't speak to him. Yes. You didn't speak to him. You didn't tell him there was an a la carte going on. You didn't tell him what was on the a la carte. How is he, how is he meant to prep it? How is he meant to prep no, it? No, but... People are just buying a few dishes. You didn't tell him what was happening. I understand so that. So this is not we... time for conversation. After serve. We've really put Pratik through his paces this evening, but our deliberate tough love has dished up a positive result. Apart from one table of two, everyone ordered the a la carte. We yeah. know that the a la carte makes more money. I would suggest that almost immediately you look at your menu and you move to an a la carte situation, yeah? Okay. It's a no-brainer for the menu direction, and tonight's service has given us plenty more to chew on. You know, your staff did you proud. 
Um, they're all really nice. Mm -hmm. The chefs are competent. So that's where the good news ends. Mm -hmm. To be honest with you, I did almost cry there this evening. You, you, you're just not present. You're in a situation where there's potentially a great business here. You're the person not running the restaurant. We want you and your family to be successful and happy, yeah. you know, and you have got to turn up. You've got to learn how many, you know, how to run a restaurant and really yeah. quickly. I want to see someone who's energetic and who's thrusting and who's enthusiastic and who's got ideas to throw into the pot rather than just waiting to receive. I know we need help because if we didn't, we wouldn't be where we are right now. I've been called to Leicester and struggling Lilu Indian restaurant, where owner Pratik is failing to turn a profit with his set menus. With the help of restaurateur Oliver Payton, we aim to reverse his fortunes, and last night began by testing Pratik's 29-pound menu against a cheaper, more profitable a la carte. Generally, I think we had uh, most people going for the a la carte as opposed to the set menu. At the end of the day, whatever gets uh, more guests coming in and actually uh, making the restaurant more profitable, that's, that's essentially what we want. With the £29 menu hopefully a thing of the past, Pratik needs to ensure each dish now makes the basic profit margins restaurants rely on. Hi JP, you OK? We've already been looking at the option of uh, adding a few more vegetarian items, costing out the individual dishes and having a better understanding of our, of our menu. Pratik appears to be listening and has called a meeting with his head chef, JP. So I need to sort out um, the, the margins. The costing um, of it. Yeah, costings, because obviously, you know, with regards to the rack of lamb, we're just not making... <laughs> we're not making target GP. The signs are encouraging. Not only is Pratik communicating with his key staff, but he has put making a profit high on his to-do list. A uh, vegetable for the starter. Next up, we need to work on the overall dining experience. It's essential in running a successful restaurant. I brought Pratik to London because there's two things we need to tackle. One is obviously the service. You know, I need to get him up to an acceptable level. The second thing is the kind of soulless nature of his venture. You know, you walk in there and it, it feels as if it could be a chain the Indian restaurant. How do you think it went uh, when we had the restaurant full the other day? Lots to learn with regards to uh, myself. Did you think all the criticism was justified? I think it was, it was hard to take. What I felt that it really showed was that you'd never worked in a restaurant before, so you've kind of made it up as you've gone along and yeah. from what you've observed from going to other places. So I'm going to take you somewhere that hopefully will fill in some of the gaps in your knowledge. Mm -hmm. Yeah? Yeah. To help him further, I found him a restaurant I really want him to experience. As for hi, Alex yeah. Panitzi, this is Pratik. Hi, hi Pratik. Hi. I'm Asma, hi. and this is Darjeeling Express, my restaurant. Asma Khan swapped law for a career in cooking. It's her passion which permeates through her first London restaurant. You know, it's your child. You know, whether they're fat, ugly and horrible and then they fail their grades, you know, you still love it because it is yours. Darjeeling Express began life as a supper club, with Asma serving 12 people in her home. Happy to be here? Very happy. Do you know Asma by repute? I know her from the supper club uh, environment, but, yeah, no, it's really exciting to be here. Asma's restaurant showcases the traditional recipes and photos which influence her food. I want Pratik to take inspiration for Lilu and see that telling the story of his mum and family is a good idea. It's amazing, we're right in the middle of London and yet somehow you're really transported. Obviously it helps having all these yeah. photographs from home. The colours have been chosen really yeah. carefully, the lighting has been done really yeah. well. It just feels very personal, doesn't it? Does, it does, yeah. I think I was always worried about using photographs from my life. But I think, as you said, people want to know where, it, where it's all from. Your restaurant has got to be a reflection of you, and I think somehow that's... You know, you, you do have a story, and you, 
and you've got a lovely story, and you've got the same kind of story that Asma has. You know, it's a family thing that you wanted to achieve, and I think somehow we've got to convey that to exactly. people. We've got to convey the soul. Combining a great atmosphere with the right level of service is key to the success of this restaurant. King runs a floor here. With 25 years' experience in the industry, he knows how to deal with customers. Have you seen fashions of service come and go? Yes, definitely. I came from a background where I was suited and booted. That formal soldier-like, uh, I don't think people want it anymore. There are some people who want to be talked to, some people want to be left alone. Mm -hmm. but all want to be fed. Great advice from King. But what has Asma learned from her time running this restaurant? What advice would you give him? What words of wisdom? If you have to let go and adopt something that is, is working, yeah. it may not be what you had dreamt of. No. But if it works, it's, for the long run, you have your restaurant. So I'm not going to see you for a while now. No. So what I really want you to think about, there's three things after today that I mm -hmm. think you know that you need to look at your menu. Yeah. Anything that's on has got to make its GP. Yeah. Take a good long look at your service and yeah. your order of service. And yeah. is there anything that you can do to simplify, to make life easier? Yeah, of course. And then the third and really almost the most important thing is to think of a way to convey your story, your narrative to the customer. Yeah to bring some personality into that place. Yeah, I think that's what it is. It's uh, trying to show that Lilu isn't just another corporate brand. Yes. It's, uh, it's, it's us, it's a family, it's, uh, it's a history. The story behind Lilu is what we need to convey. Pratik may be in charge. All right, then, I'll see you later then. Bye. But his wife, Bavini, has supported his big ideas from the beginning. Patek's always had, like, big ambitions. He's, I think he's on that's called, like, the biggest dreams. He's achieved the dream of opening the restaurant to be an established restaurant. I think mean, that's what his next dream is to be. I, I guess I am starting to feel a little bit more positive about it, uh, learning... Uh, the things that we're falling short on. It's more about proving to myself that I'm able to run a successful restaurant business um, and sort of learning from my mistakes. It's Diwali time. Families gather to celebrate the festival of lights and great food. In the kitchens at Lilu, Pratik is working into the night on new dishes for his a la carte menu. We might need a touch of uh, lemon. We need dishes that are profitable, but also allow him to tell customers the story behind his food. And we've also added uh, one of uh, my mum's uh, special recipes. So she used to make a, uh, it's basically a, like a cabbage salad, so a raw cabbage salad. Dishes like this are quick to assemble and therefore speedier to serve. These are all encouraging signs from Pratik. I think we're sort of gaining a little bit of pace with... Show people we're doing something a little bit different. We just need to still be here in 20 years. The last few years have been tough for Pratik, but hearing him talk about the future is a real step in the right direction. The next morning, and it's an early start for Pratik, who's been invited onto local radio to share his love of food. This is a wonderful opportunity to go public with the new plans for Lilu. Good morning to you. It's eight minutes past ten. Coming up after UB40 and Chrissy Hyde, we're going to be speaking to Pratik Master. Now, Pratik is from Lilu uh, in the city centre here in Leicester, and he's got some hints and tips for you for Diwali. <laughs> With around 150,000 listeners a week, this is a chance for Pratik to sell his story and share a recipe inspired by his mum. It's the one dish that I still have mothers asking me how to make. Canvi is a dish from his childhood. It's been hard for Pratik to share his food memories on his menu, but bit by bit, it's starting to happen. 
I always thought about doing these for the restaurant as well, mm. but I guess you're always uh, scared to a certain extent that will people want to see what you've grown up with. With Pratik announcing plans for his new menu, I've asked Oliver to check up on progress. I mean, how much do you look forward to Diwali, not only with the restaurant, with friends, with family, with cooking things? What does it mean to you? Diwali is really important to us because we, uh, with the restaurant, uh, we're, we're always sort of uh, trying new things. So on the 1st of November, we're actually doing a, uh, a new menu, uh, which is going to sort of maybe even include some of the items that we're actually uh, making today. I and mean, this is amazing because he's born for this, well, isn't he? He sounds like he sounds like an old hand. Like you know, well, he gets amazing. up in the morning and he does a radio I show. It's say, great. Yeah, uh, I've got to say, Pratik, there is so many delicious smells. It smells wonderful. So here we go. Oh, oh, good. Mm. <laughs> they say you shouldn't eat with your mouth full. Well, like, talk with your mouth full. Well, Show I was just like. I've got to have another can's late. Uh, 11 o'clock news is on the way. You know, behind that smile, is there any action? That's what I want to know. Hello. Pratik, you have a menu board. I do. Give me a hug. How are you? It's a miracle, isn't it? <laughs> People now know what you sell. It does help, doesn't it? It does help. Yeah. No, we, um... And what's also encouraging is that Pratik has been busy with the finances. Are you working on costing? I am, I am. Uh, I think uh, you've uh, drummed it into me. As you, as you said, uh, I've got to be a walking, talking calculator. Uh, Forget about that. I don't talk about that yet. I want to talk about the fact that you are the Terry Wogan of, uh, of Leicester. <laughs> yes, well, um, yeah, that was a, it was a very interesting morning, uh, sort of just going through, I guess, going through my passion. Have you saved me any of those canvases? I certainly have. Perfect starter. Yeah. Lovely, lovely. I mean, you could add a couple more dips to it. Yeah, yeah. A little flavour of uh, what Mum used to cook. Not only does this dish have a story, it also makes a healthy 70% profit, something we've insisted on since day one. Everything on the menu has to have a price. Time for Oliver to remind Pratik of exactly why. So we're at the table of uh, free food. We're at the table of free food. <laughs> so how much is all this free food costing you? I think we're looking at sort of at least uh, sort of one fifty to two pounds per person. Well, wow. is that co cost price to you? That's cost price to us. So on a busy night with forty covers, it means Pratik could be giving away up to eighty pounds in free food. You know, one of the things you really notice when you go into a good restaurants mm. is you don't get any bread until you've ordered. Yeah, that's right. You yeah. get them after you've ordered, and I think that's quite important. Mm -hmm. Because what you don't want to do is people come in, sit down, start eating, and oh, a bit full already. Yeah. <laughs> you know? yeah Can I just change the bill, please? Yeah. yeah. Finally, it seems like the menu is on the right track and the free food is in check. We just need Pratik to keep working towards the finish line. When I ate here the last time, I felt I was like in the restaurant in The Shining or something. It was just a time piece. Alex and I have very high hopes for Pratik, so when we come back, I want this to be rocking. It's less than a week until Pratik opens the doors and launches his new start for Lilu. I've just sent you an email. We just want a bifold menu. An Indian restaurant he was inspired to open in memory of his late mother. With Mum's blessing, we're on the road to success. It's time to uh, shoot for the stars. With the complete overhaul of his menu and the restaurant interior well underway, we now need to continue with the promotion. So is this the salad we're going to be photographing first? The cabbage salad. The cabbage, the cabbage salad. I have arranged for local photographer Scott Chauchino to help Pratik take stills of his new dishes for his website and social media. Photographing food is so important today. The food hashtag has millions of hits. It's probably one of the most photographed things in the country right now. To make a good food image, there's three things which are really important. The first, which is lighting. Ideally, you want to work with the available light. The best place to do it is outside in the shade yeah. or indoors, but with natural light coming in. Shall I get my camera? After that, it'd be composition. No fancy equipment required. 
just a smartphone. With an image like this, a lot of it is hidden in the deep bowl. Yeah. So what we really want to do is pull it out so you can really see all of these ingredients. Okay. We've got the purples, reds, yellows and greens coming through, so it adds a bit more interest to it. And lemon juice just over there. Kept the stalk in there. Quickly grab this shot. OK, cool. There's no way you'd know there'd be the lemon flavour coming yeah. through without seeing the lemons on the side. Mm -hmm. So it's these important little details which really tell the customer what they're going to be tasting and what they're going to be yeah. experiencing. How Lilu communicates with its customers has needed work from day one, but it seems finally we're making positive progress. Now with new dishes looking as good as they taste, Pratik wants to share his story and food with the local press. Yeah, yeah, I can hear you now. So obviously we're writing a bit of a story about your new venue, so I'm just calling to find out a bit more about it. Lilu is the realisation of his dream to open a restaurant with his mum. Now Pratik is trying to honour her memory by making it a success. You know, mum was such a massive influence on my uh, food knowledge. I try not to think about it because it does. It, it's, it's not something that... Um... To me, if anyone just comes back and says, oh, yeah, we can think about your mum's food, that's me done. Like, that, that's what I want. Nice to see you back in Leicester. I'm excited. I'm nervous. Why? Because I hope that he's actually learnt some lessons and we're going to see a transformed pratique. The last time we saw Lilu put through its paces, it was hard to watch. But we're about to discover whether our tough love strategy has paid off. What do you think? Better. Much, much better. Menu's in the menu boxes. Hello! Oh. How are you? Hi, hey, you good. Have any? Good, good. Are you pleased with how it's looking? Yes. It's beautiful. The fact that you've got rid of Indian fine dining. Yeah. Yes. It looks a lot more uh, professional. This was a restaurant that had lost its way, and for the last two years, customers had been passing it by. With its overpriced menu of costly dishes and an owner lost in his own grief, this was a business that was at a standstill. On the inside, the welcome was more corporate than cosy. Mismatched prints and abstract artefacts never displayed the real story of Lilu. The story of Pratik's family and his life. Is your dad glad to have it up? Yeah. Got quite emotional yesterday. But you know, darling, it's real. I mean, that's the thing. We're not faking anything. No. We haven't made anything up. How many bookings have you got? Uh, 38 covers to work. And, and you've spread out the bookings? We have. Over okay. what? How, how uh, staggered So are we've got our first table coming in at 6, and mm -hmm. I think our last table's coming in at 9 o'clock. Good. Wow, that's, that's a very good spread. Yes. Gosh, so you're turning tables. We are. Yeah, you don't seem that excited. You seem nervous. We want tonight to go fantastic as a, as a beginning to the rest. So, yeah. That's a really Pratik's hard work promoting his relaunch has certainly paid off. We're doing a whole new menu today. And after watching how a busy London restaurant runs, he is leading his first proper staff meeting. Yeah, we're, we're ready to go. The restaurant looks lovely. I mean, it definitely looks a lot warmer and cosier than it did before. Hopefully, Pratik seems, you know, a bit energised got a long service to get through. Let's see how we get on. Hopefully, we've given him the skills and confidence to run a successful restaurant, not just for tonight, but into the future. I'm going to go with the Mumbai chance. Isn't that fantastic? Never had it outside of Mumbai. <laughs> Would you like to order any sides? Uh, we've got a special one today, which is our um, cabbage kachumba. Is anyone ordering lamb for your main? It goes especially well with the lamb. Uh, stuffed baby peppers with a minced paneer inside. I'm hearing him upselling dishes, which is really nice. He definitely seems as if he's more in the game. 
Would you like me to tell you a little bit more about the menu? Yes. yes. Right. So to, to be fair to him, he's listened to what we're saying, he's talking more about the menu, he's engaged with the customers. Happy days. Also, we've got a special on today with our cabbage kachumba. Now it's time to feed you. We will try to dazzle. Can I ask you, how is butter chicken a side dish? We get a lot of requests for people not to order uh, a full order of butter chicken, but they want to have a little bit between two. Oh, and that's why it's on there, and that's basically the only reason it is. Uh... You have a lens for everything, don't you? I mean, mm. you really do. You're, you're in the wrong business. You need to go to politics. <laughs> <laughs> I'll take that away for you. Thank, Thank you very much. I thought that was really well done. I thought it was really professional. I liked the way he came to the table. You know, you're very intimidating and... and uh... Uh, the team has been uh, a real asset to us. It's also nice for them to be getting a certain amount of praise as well. Jeffy, well done, mate. Aww. That food came out really beautifully. You did enjoy our meal? Really speedily. Yeah. You know, food is great. They work really hard, and uh, it's, it's good for them to also get a little bit of recognition. I think it was something we both commented on was when we first saw Oliver do the secret filming. Yeah. You looked, you did not look comfortable in your service role. Yeah. But I saw a completely different Pratik tonight. I actually thought you were physically attached to the counter, that it moved with you, you know. Whereas now, I feel you are an integral part of this business. When we came here and done 18 covers, it was chaos. And do 35 covers, and you could have, in my opinion, doubled that amount. Of yeah, I'm hoping like this is the first night of you owning and running a restaurant, and you're going to still make mistakes, and you're still going to have to change, but you've made a bloody good fist of it tonight. Yeah. You are a changed man. I just want to make sure that you keep going. Don't yes. stop. Keep moving. Give me a big hug. <laughs> Thanks. Well done. Thank you. I wasn't that bad, was I? <laughs> <laughs> we love it. We'll be back soon. Yeah. We'll be back. Thank you. Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you. Watch those customers. Send them some champagne. Yes, let's do it. The Bollinger. It's done free. I have to admit, I'm pleased. Do you know what? That went way better than I expected. I was really worried about the trip. Oliver and I are leaving with a spring in our step, not because there's been such a massive change in Lulu the restaurant and its success. I mean, that it remains to be seen. What we have seen is a massive difference in Pratik. We are here to help people. We want everyone to succeed. And I am super happy with what he's done so far. The restaurant feels it's got a, a real story, uh, a story of our history, our past, uh, but also growing towards the future and a brighter future. This is ultimately a family business, but it's up to Pratik to show that it can be a success.